This is Twit. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Yeah, time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches. Johnny Jet wasn't on this uh, this uh, past hour because he is celebrating his birthday. His wife, Natalie, threw him a big party. So uh, we'll talk to Johnny Jet, our travel guru, next week on the show. No, I'm sorry. Tomorrow. He's going to be here tomorrow. Okay, we'll do it tomorrow on the show. Yeah, but meanwhile, I can talk with you. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, 888-827-5536. Toll free. Call us anytime. The website, techguylabs.com. That's where you'll find answers to the questions, video and audio from the show as well. Techguylabs.com. Joseph from Orange County is next. Hi, Joseph. Hello, Leo. Hello. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Leo, I just wanted to comment on DW's voice. Uh, people have often told me that I have a face that's made for radio. So. <laughs> he has a voice that's made for radio. <laughs> yeah. uh, what serious? Seriously, though, what I wanted to I wanted to get your thoughts and hear you riff a little about the future future of automation. The reason is is I'm an electrical engineer in Orange County, and I have more and more clients that are asking me to automate products so that they can get rid of their employees. And oh I my employees goodness! The end of all these things. Oh example, my goodness! You have you have the possibility now that we could have computer automated programs that could more accurately predict the future investments returns and why would people use brokers anymore or right. for example doctors why would you go to a doctor if a computer automated machine could tell you the right time to conceive or the final one why would you have a politician when you could have a computer automated machine that couldn't be bribed or couldn't be corrupted and would always make an impartial decision. I'm going to hang up now and listen to what you have to great, say. Great questions. I, uh, I I'm, Thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to refer people who are interested in this to a fantastic book. There are many of them. There's a lot of conversation about the future of work and stuff going on right now because we're all very concerned uh, as jobs start to dwindle away. I mean, all you have to do is take a look at uh, autonomous vehicles, now, admittedly, they're far from perfect, <laughs> and it may be another decade. Who knows? It may be, you know, somebody once said the future is both uh, closer than you think and farther than you might imagine. Uh, at some point, though, not in the dis too distant future, because some very smart people are working hard on self-driving cars, um, self-driving cars will be commonplace. More than 1% of the nation's workforce drives for a living truck drivers, cabbies, chauffeurs. There's a That's a big portion of our workforce. Many of those people be out of work. It's the whole, it's Uber's entire business plan. Uber loses money because they have human drivers and there's no way to fix that except to get rid of the humans. And uh, Uber's not valued at billions and billions of dollars for nothing. People, people believe that's going to happen. So the book I'm going to recommend is by a very deep thinker. He's a professor uh, in Israel named Yuval Noah Harari, H-A-R-A-R-I. And he's written several really uh, good books, but his most recent is 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. And he addresses exactly those ideas that you just mentioned. Well, I'll give you an example of the politicians. As AI progresses and becomes better and better, artificial intelligence... It is easy to imagine a near future where AI can correctly figure out how to do things, you know, lay out a city, for instance, or build a building better than a human can. It could even figure out how to run a country, make political decisions better than a human can. But Harari points out that there is something we still need humans for. AI, as you as you know, because you're an engineer, AI doesn't work in a vacuum. It needs to be told what the goal is. So you can say, well, we want to lay out a city. We want you to lay out a city. But you need to say uh, so that there's minimum congestion, minimum driving. It's walkable. You have to give it the goals, the parameters. And then it can solve the problem. The role of humans as the goal setters isn't going to go away. 
We need humans to decide what our priorities are. That's what we do, to decide what we want. And then machines can do the work. In medicine, uh, we aren't there yet, but at some point it's pretty conceivable that machines will be better at diagnosing our ills than human doctors. Right now, a human doctor relies on her memory uh, you know, uh, for all the different possible diseases you could have and all the diagnostic information. She's basically a computer and not a very good computer because memory is imperfect. A computer could do all that. We'd still need humans, though. We'd still need humans to give injections. We'd still need humans to tuck somebody in. We'd still need humans to hold hands. And we definitely would need humans to talk to us about what the diagnostics came up with and our treatment options. And AI could say, well, the best treatment option would be this, but I think you still need a human to communicate. So there's roles for humans, but the roles are shifting and changing. And I, I think I agree with you that an artificial intelligence can do a great many things we currently do better than we currently do them. Driving is one. Diagnostics, medical diagnostics is another. Planning an economy very likely. So the question is really where what is human's role what is our human role in all of this? And I think even if we had perfect AIs and we're far from that as you know. Uh, but even if we had perfect AIs and I think those days will come at some point or at least close to perfect, there still has to be a human in the mix to tell it what to do, to tell it what our goals are, what we want, what we're looking for. Look, there's no question um, the world is about to change dramatically. It has been for the last 30 years. The Internet has changed things incredibly. Social media has had consequences, far-reaching consequences, no one ever predicted. We can see everything changing around us all the time. And that, uh, I believe, the, the one constant is that change, not only is change a constant, but that it, it, it's going to accelerate. It's going to happen at a faster rate every year. You know, more things happened in the last, more inventions, more changes in our society and our way of life in the last 10 years than maybe in the last 100 years before that. So, and I think that's going to continue. So, um, I guess the lessons to take away from it are that AI is going to do a lot more than anybody imagines. It's, going to, it's really capable of a, a lot of things. And a lot of things like perhaps medicine, that we think are exclusively the province of humans would maybe better be better done by uh, by an AI, maybe maybe even politics. But you're still going to need politicians and doctors. They're just going to have a slightly different role. We have to think about what that role is going to be, though, as as time goes by. I think it's a fascinating subject, and I, I can't think of a better reference than that book, Yuval Noah Harari. He's a deep-thinking philosopher. He wrote Homo, uh, uh, what he wrote, Sapiens and Homo Deus. His most recent is 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. If you're interested in this kind of thing, well, very provocative, well worth uh, reading. And he doesn't have all the answers, but he poses all the right questions, no doubt about that.